Okay, today we're going to look at, uh, again, how, how faith uh, saves us in the Bible. And we're going to look at both Noah and at Abraham. Let's start with Noah here, number five. Noah had faith with, that when God told him that there would be a flood that would destroy the entire earth because of the widespread sin on, on, in the world. Now up to this point, it hadn't even rained on earth. There was, there was dew in the morning that came down and watered the plants, but there was no rain that ever occurred up to this point. And there was no flood that had occurred up to this point. But God told Noah that there would be a flood. And God told Noah to build an ark. And God gave him plans for the ark, very detailed plans. It's in the Bible. So day after day, for many years, and the Bible doesn't say how long Noah worked at building the ark, but it appears that it's uh, many, many years, possibly a hundred years, possibly even longer than that, but it was many, many years it took Noah and his family to build the ark. So Noah and his sons built the ark and preaching to everyone about the coming flood. Now he, he must have been uh, considered a real uh, nutcase, you might say, because there was no flood, it hadn't rained, or never rain didn't come down. And uh, I would imagine he was building this flood where there was no water. I mean, this ark where there was no water. So he, he was probably uh, considered pretty uh, oddball amongst his neighbors there. So all laughed at him, but when the ark was completed, Noah and his family were the only ones saved through their faith in God. So God told them to build an ark, that there would be a flood coming because of the sin on earth. Noah followed the instructions of God, even amongst the, the ridicule that they must have gotten, people laughing at him and calling him crazy names. But in the end, Noah and his family were saved. Now let's take a look at this from the Bible here, a few of the texts. We're still on number five here. In Genesis 6, 9, and in the, uh, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. That's a good thing to say, uh, to be say, said of someone, isn't it? That Noah walked with God. Genesis 6, 14. This is God talking to Noah. He says, Make me an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and it shall pitch it within and without. The pitch is uh, uh, to waterproof. It's like a tar. So he told them to build it with a gopher wood, make it waterproof. And thus did Noah according to what God commanded him to do. So Noah did exactly what God instructed him to do. We read in Hebrews 11, 7, it says, By faith, Noah being warned, warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house, his household, his family, by the which he condemned the world and became heirs of the righteousness which is by faith. So Noah and his family, his household, was saved by faith, even back then. In Second Peter uh, 2, verse 5, we read, and spare not the old world, but saved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So we know from studying the book of Daniel and Revelation that God is going to bring a great calamity on earth to bring the sin, 
uh, problem to an end. It's called the Great Tribulation in Revelation. So it's just like in the days of Noah. God is, has, has gave Noah instructions on what would happen. Noah and his family were saved because they followed God's instructions. It's going to be the same thing during the Great Tribulation. And that's what these studies are all about. So we can learn what's going to happen during the Great Tribulation, and we can be saved. All right, now let's turn now to number six. Number six is Abraham. And let me put that over here. Okay, so Abraham was chosen by God to lead, leave the idols of Mesopotamia and go to a place where God could make of him a great nation. So this is, was the promise to, know, to Abraham, that he would make of him a great nation. So Abraham was told that through his descendants, the promised Savior would come. Of course, Sarah, his wife, was barren. She had no children. And she was getting up there in age. She was 90 years old. But God had promised them a son, Isaac, who, who they called him later. And, uh, and according to the promise, she was. She, she bore a child named Isaac. And so this was a very special child because they had waited all these years for this child and uh, this was their, probably their apple or their eye, I'm sure it was. So imagine what happened next. The one day God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac to him. Well, sacrifice means put him to death. Burn him on the altar. So Abraham believed that God could raise Isaac from the dead if he had to sacrifice him. So he trusted God and faithfully followed God's instructions. So later on, when they were up in the mountains, Abraham had built an altar, put the wood on the altar, and he asked his son to uh, get on the altar. He tied him down there. And, was, and, and when Abraham was about to sacrifice his son Isaac, God miraculously provided a lamb for the sacrifice, and therefore Abraham didn't have to sacrifice his son. But he followed God's instructions right to the end. And of course, in this case, God stepped in and provided that sacrifice. Let's read some of this here from the Bible. Genesis 22, verse 8. And Abraham said to his son Isaac, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both of them, so, so went both of them together. So they went to the mountain together. They put uh, firewood on one of the animals and uh, Abra uh, Isaac said, where is the sacrifice, Dad? And, and uh, Abraham said that God would provide the sacrifice. So in James uh, 2.23, says the scriptures was fulfilled, which said Abraham believed God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. And we read also in uh, Hebrews 11.17, says, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, uh, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who ha had embraced the, very, the promises was about to sacrifice his son, his one and only son. So uh, uh, Abraham got right up to the point of sacrificing his son, and then God stepped in and provided the, uh, the sacrifice a lamb. One more promise here. This is in Romans 4, 16. Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Well, we're Abraham's offspring, aren't we? 
not only to those who are of the law, that's the Jews, but also the, to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. So the promise comes through Abraham, through Abraham's faith. So here's another uh, terrific example how God rewards faith in him.